IIT Bombay and after my uh, master's degree MTech in manufacturing technologies, I joined Procter & Gamble. Uh, Procter & Gamble, I spent almost a decade with them, last decade uh, with them uh, and located in Kobe, Japan as well as Singapore. So my last assignments were mostly on how we can do product design and development uh, for mass consumers and the scale was the challenge in those cases. So how we scale up uh, employee be effective in product development. So Raul, that's Raul, where I Raul, your voice is cracking. I'm really sorry. Your voice is cracking. So okay. Yes. So I will mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Is it better? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Better now. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as I was introducing myself, so most of my experience had been uh, product development for consumer goods, and later on uh, last year, I was looking for opportunity to move back in India, and I get in got in touch with Ankit and Arpit and uh, I was totally impressed by the effort they had put in and I'm very glad to lead this uh, uh, metal additive manufacturing uh, cell and let's let's get it started. So first is the poll. It gives us uh, understanding about who our audience is and prepare our presentations accordingly. So first poll result Ankit briefly discussed. So another poll we are posting is about the digital literacy. So we want to know how much people are aware about CAD, CAM and CAE type of uh, tools, their years of experiences. So uh, Sankha, can you post that first poll? And meanwhile, uh, you are taking the poll. I will tell you a brief about our uh, today's presentation. So what I will make you aware, share tips and tools, uh, knowledge about technology both in polymers as well as metals and uh, based on that uh, how you can draw parallels in your operations your problem solving techniques so that is something that we want to achieve at the end of the day so today is a sort of a knowledge sharing session so i will not take many questions questions answer sessions will be happening at the end of the presentation so there will be uh, poll in between to keep you engaged and uh, answer some of your questions. So last session's questions will be answered uh, in this presentation uh, up to a certain extent because we are diving deep into design technology. So many people had asked what is the best technique or best machine out there. So these type of questions I will answer. So Sankha, please post the poll for the first one about the experience. Uh, yes, sir. I've already posted. The answers are coming in slowly. Uh, okay, uh, it's, so it's, I will. It's running. Yeah. So the poll is ongoing. So uh, in in case of uh, this housekeeping or uh, presentation rules, I would like to share some of the uh, uh, questions that we got last time. Those questions uh, were sometimes specific, sometimes very general. So we are in a good spirit sharing our experiences. We are exposing some of the case studies as well. So some of the case studies are with our customers who are very keen about confidentiality of their projects as well. So we are bound by non-disclosure agreements. We cannot answer all questions through the level of detail, sharing CAD data or any sort of technical know-hows. So please don't ask those type of questions. Yeah, and uh, we will answer in a good spirit as much as possible to share the journey uh, the way we are applying principles. So the focus will be mostly on that. So let's get started. So today's uh, outline is to help the potential as well as existing users uh, and bringing the awareness about tools, techniques, tips, and design guidelines. And target users are primarily polymers and metal, as I mentioned, my experience in polymer and now in metal. But it can be 
uh, be applicable to any other sort of material in medical applications nowadays tissue engineering in that cases they are printing uh, organ models and all with the uh, unique gel type of materials or food can be 3d printed construction industry as well looking at printing the entire house so all that sort of applications are there so although the target audience today i am considering polymer and metal but you can reapply anywhere and the presentation is going to cover wow quality results so that's the way i have designed uh, this webinar so objective wise of course you are looking for easier adoption in your organization for this type of 3d printing processes better quality as well as the production throughput uh, reduction in wastages and exploiting the power of design freedom and flexibility that's the key focus uh, i will pause over here and draw your attention the camo's model analysis of uh, design for delight so when i say design for delight people just assume the design is something that totally revolutionize or transform uh, the industry no so if you are just conceptualizing certain thing and it is not in put in practice that's very basic and that's a very slow pace of improvement on same old same old nothing changes and disappointments are common so uh, any sort of design that you make needs to be fabricable as well as can be scaled up koi koi problem hua beech mein so uh, in case of uh, certain satisfiable type of efforts you can see you are still learning with the status quo uh, you are continuously improving but just a linear growth so you withdraw from past experience certain thing and you improve slightly in that way you are just satisfying the customer but it's not a delight yet delight happens when you have best quality lower cost faster delivery and less resource intensive solutions so that's where factory results are there and those are the winning products in market so as you can know the putting effort with different aspect and it's a team effort making people uh, to be aware of the technologies and work with us so that we win in the market and our uh, make in india campaign Uh, in in that light or uh, with four stages i have segmented again how does exploiting design freedom sound to you how does breaking the rules conventional norms sound to you how whether these are competitive advantage obviously these are really competitive advantage if you are uh, able to change the ball game by achieving higher yields reprioritizing being flexible jumping the queues or having a low low cost of inventory so all those things are availed by these type of technologies and ultimately modern digital tools are very key that's why i put those poll so you have to exploit the power of predict or perish so those who are not predicting and just going blindly they are failing and that's a perish game so you have to predict but Uh, any sort of trust in those models comes with certain doubts as well so that's why you have to do iteration but iterate with caution because uh, there can be a situations of analysis paralysis so you keep on running the iterations and uh, get into a catch 22 never ending loops so once you gain certain confidence so 80 20 type of principle you can apply so 80 percent of the problem get solved 
with a 20% of effort where you have certain uh, confidence building measures with the predictive models and then you uh, quickly verify them with the simulation and even though the simulation is not 100% accurate no simulation is 100% accurate because there are certain approximation in physics based equations so uh, the most realistic that you can expect is 95% accuracy or 90% accuracy but you can still run with it you can roll out those plan accommodate those last minute intervention observe and learn and do ensure there is a feedback loop so once you learn certain thing when you feed it back to the design phases that's where the power of this uh, uh, concurrent engineering comes into play so it's simple as a plan do check act type of model so in case of design you are identifying the end user needs looking at constraints locking down certain optimization targets then you are tweaking the models in order to uh, reach that goals in 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 case of am processes you are uh, designing the build strategy build strategy means a production strategy then applying optimal uh, supports utilizing build envelope to the maximum extent managing those queues uh, in modeling and simulation in case context of additive manufacturing what you are doing is uh, you are reducing the risk ultimately so you are simulating two or three scenarios you don't have to print all the time you can virtually simulate the scenarios out of those three which performs best you can choose choose that and run for production and ultimately how to manage the queues uh, production management that is something everybody does but keeping the records and building the knowledge where that's where power of this technology exists so let's uh, go to the core of the design principles so over here i prepared this uh, just one page uh, ppt which is very self explanatory you can see if you want to get a better accuracy of a sphere so the digital world is not a mathematical true geometry based you have to define it in a digital fashion which is finite so any data needs to be finite so that's the reason why uh, the sphere you can see you can discretize using triangulation and the size of triangulation uh, dictates the quality of your uh, definition of a geometry so that definition is key uh, but how to choose can i go micron sub micron what is the limit so th that sort of question people ask so that's where you need to take a look at what is your uh, machine's capabilities are in terms of uh, how thin are the layer structure that you can print so slicing of that uh, stl file stl means uh, S steel lithography triangles so those uh, mesh data you have to do slicing and apply a specific layer thickness so depending on the layer thickness you can decide the accuracy of a triangulation so if you are working with the uh, machine which can deposit a layer of uh, 50 micron then you should be choosing a 10 micron yes. as accuracy so something of that sort uh, uh, there are guidelines that you can refer to and uh, ultimately out of that uh, slice file you get contours and those contours needs to be filled up so those are called g codes so be it a extruder type of technology or laser base so that laser beam or extruder has to trace that, that specific tool path in order to deposit each layer so that's how the core uh, data preparation works so this is very basic uh, those who are expert it's a repetition for you but just bear with me because 20 percent of the audience is either novice uh, or they are uh, interested to learn and gain uh, uh, these tips okay so going on forward with the that data preparation so how to choose the best optimal orientation this is the slide dedicated for that so you can see uh, in case of uh, 3d printing the stair taping effect occurs and because of that the surface finish gets affected so uh, in order to get a better surface finish you have to orient a geometry over here one example i have shown so wine glass uh, if it is held axi symmetrically along with the z axis aligned then you get a better smoother geometry compared to that if you tilt it 40 degree or 45 degree then 
the surface roughness increases. So these are the some basics and the layer thickness lower it is higher the surface finish uh, because the stair stepping effect will be less but it will be at the cost of build time. Build time means the production run time of a machine. So number of layers will increase so deposition of those layers will be taking time so that's why the penalty factor is the time if, if you choose the lower layer thicknesses and ultimately uh, you cannot build any structure without support so that's a basic uh, construction principle right so over here uh, the support structures are uh, a kind of a, a fabricated mesh that can be uh, detached so either it can be break away sometimes with the chemical tricks they can be dissolved away but that is essential because you need certain base on which you can deposit layers so that's the reason why support structures are essential but those are again waste so uh, minimal possible that's the better strategy so uh, over here the three orientations you can see the third one is the uh, strategy where you can have a least amount of support structure so these are the considerations which are just basic thumb rules when it comes to 3d printing and you can uh, refer to these two pages uh, whenever you are in doubt or oh, i'm confused so you can refer to these pages uh, when you're designing a geometrical aspect of your product design so uh, sir uh, that is orientation hello? sorry sir? yeah so I'll be sharing the poll results. Uh, there will be an issue with the poll, but I'm sharing the poll results right now. You can look at it and then give your views. Okay. Yes, yes, please. Okay, cool. So 30% of the audience, uh, I guess, benefited from my uh, two slides that I shared. Uh, two to five years of experience as well might have gained some insights. And of course, five... making just one part in multiple versions of the design iterations that you are doing simultaneously at once so that's the beauty of uh, this technology over here you can see uh, the first illustration is of uh, metal parts so around four parts are planned together to be printed and the blue color is a support structure and the gray color parts are the end result product and all those four can be simultaneously placed inside the build chamber to be printed together. Uh, in case of metal, you cannot stack one over the other. You can up to certain extent, but uh, better not to in case of metal. But in case of plastics, you can pack as many components together as you can. Uh, the difference between two technologies, the reason behind it is in case of metal, uh, the heat dissipation from part has to occur. Otherwise, uh, because of residual stresses, they have a tendency to uh, deform and warp and damage the process. So that's the reason why individual parts are better. But in case of uh, polymers, you can stack one over the other. Uh, over here, uh, in certain technologies like SLS or PolyJet, uh, there is, uh, in case of SLS, you don't need a support. In case of PolyJet and other technique, the support can be dissolved away so there is a freedom available so that's the reason why in case of polymer you can stack it to get the best uh, volume efficiency now uh, many people ask me about the design rules and how i can choose one technology over the other there are so many players there are so many acronyms i cannot follow uh, each acronym and uh, the again each machine maker dictates certain design rules. So it's too confusing. Uh, how, how can I get a better deal? Can you explain me or recommend me the best machine out there? So there is no simple answer in that case. So uh, over here, the design rules will help you based on what design scenario you are going to solve. What is the geometric 
specific aspect that you have as a unique problem and you have to choose that specific technology based on uh, your constraint and material requirement so material is very key and uh, instead of going by the jargons because uh, jargons such as sla sls dlp fdm polyjet all these names might confuse you again those machine makers there is no one brilliant machine maker each one is uh, gaining competitive advantage with their patented uh, system systemic improvements but go to the core where you want to achieve certain mechanical properties certain chemical composition Enlisted, uh, how the overall recipe looks like. So you have a raw infield of uh, certain materials that you want to transform to a specific shape as well as properties, and the patented technology. So the first row shows the thermoplastics. So it can be fed by a uh, roll fed. This is the most popular and desktop uh, machines uh, since 2012. Uh, almost a dozen of companies. Uh, are offering this type of uh, systems, but the original patent was from Stratasys, and these are some of the results by Stratasys. Then another technique is uh, the thermoplastic can be injection molded. So there are companies uh, coming up with the droplet deposition technologies, and with that you can have a multi-material effect as well. So that uh, there can be a flexible material and uh, uh, a solid material. Similarly, in case of uh, wet polymerization technologies. The basic is SLA. That was uh, Chuck Hull, as uh, uh, Ankit mentioned. He started up this concept almost three decades back, and it's most mature. We have it in our labs as well. So those production machines uh, can print with one uh, specific uh, resin, and those are very robust and uh, mature techniques, and you get good quality results like this, and. Uh, on top of that, recently, polyjet machines, which use similar sort of uh, uh, resins, but those are jet jetted, uh, you can get a most brilliant result. So this is the latest uh, J850 by Stratasys. So this is by object technology. So they can uh, do the multi-material color effects. So almost realistic anatomical model with the see-through concept that can be achieved in these type of technologies as well. So uh, the mantra nowadays looks like not just the basic prototyping, but how can we achieve color, texture, as well as elasticity. So how we can change the uh, formulation of these uh, raw infield chemical composition, you get the these results. So you can play with the chemistry and you can get show hardness, or texture that is different. So in case of HP, they are doing the same as well. They, the basic platform of uh, uh, selective laser centering where powder bed uh, fusion is happening using laser. So on top of that, they can do uh, droplet deposition using material jetting technique for colors, textures, and tweaking the properties. So that's how the industry is evolving. And uh, the reason behind me sharing this because I wanted to be as uh, platform independent and without bias because I'm serving uh, clients who are familiarity with certain machines and certain opinionated views. So demystifying that and revealing them what's out there, what we can achieve is very key for us. So that's the reason why I'm showing this. So in case of metals, we have a, a direct metal laser solidification technology so it's again powder bed fusion type so uh, the laser is the uh, activation energy so we have 400 watt laser power that can fuse together uh, most of the ferrous alloys and some of the non-ferrous alloys so people do ask us whether all type of uh, engineering plastic and all type of uh, metal 
alloys can be worked out in these type of machines? So the answer is no and yes. Why no? First, because uh, the process dictates, just like in case of thermoplastic, uh, you need thermoplastic for injection molding. You cannot use thermosetting uh, type of uh, resins in case of injection molding. So process dictates the raw infield and the chemical composition and physical properties. So uh, that's the reason why I said no, but yes, because uh, these technologies are uniquely solving problems which conventional technologies were not able to. So uh, sometimes metal produced parts are better than sand casted, investment casted quality. And there are no porosity, the density is 99% above. And uh, you can see even aerospace industry is utilizing these type of parts. So fuel injectors, uh, blades for the turbines, there are plenty of op applications that tomorrow our colleagues will cover as well. And there is one more technique in metal, which is uh, the similar sort of filament extrusion. And these, these techniques are, are also evolving. Uh, so far, those are not as matured as DMLS. So we are a, a, a kind of a reliable and uh, responsible company. So we need to experiment. Uh, we had experience with the DMLS, but as the technology is maturing, we will take a look into other alternatives as well and be on offer. Okay. So let's look at another technology in metal as well. So when you need higher deposition rates, these are the two techniques called direct energy deposition methods. So in this case, either laser or again, electron beam type of energy transfer can be done and the deposition rates can be much faster and you can achieve almost a human height part you can see over here. So a bigger build, bigger geometries, you can achieve much faster. Uh, okay, so uh, so far I covered the uh, polymers, metals, design principles, uh, as well as the how to make choices, what is the accuracy, precision, what is the strength, what is the core fundamental uh, behind the activation energy, physical properties, all that as aspects. So in case of uh, DMLS, if you have a, certain uh, queries uh, what alloys we can produce are stainless steels tool steels uh, then in non ferrous we can do nickel alloys uh, titanium alloys as well as aluminum alloys uh, and nowadays copper is emerging as well so these are the choices that you can have and in case of stainless steel as well there are further breakouts in case of tool steel as well specific to the need we can uh, formulate certain chemical composition and physical properties uh, with our raw fit supply partners but it is with the r d effort so the ready to offer we have parameter sets process parameter sets ready and we have a supply chain established for getting infield of the raw powder but if any specific composition has to occur then we have to put certain extra effort for that okay so let's move on to the design guidelines so this is a, a very vast field. Each one uh, in the industry is tackling different sort of problems uh, and design for manufacturing is, is essential. So if you're designing for machining versus casting or injection molding and simply transitioning those designs to 3D printing is sometimes tedious. So you have to begin with the mindset that if this object has to be 3D printed, what are the pros and cons, where I can exploit the uh, competitive advantages of the technology and uh, uh, forget the old design rules. So over here, uh, I think Purdue Engineering C Design Lab has done an excellent job. So uh, there had been a lot of failures in the market, uh, be it our designs as well. We were trying out early phases, uh, maybe 2012, 13, the starting years. So that's the uh, uh, resistance years, I would say, that in PNG as well, I witnessed, I failed certain uh, models that I was, was making. And I, I suppose Ankit had those sort of experiences in the first seminar he has shared. So effective problem definition and design done right. It's like well begun means half done. So that's the reason why this is very crucial. So. You, this chart, they have made it uh, for 
as a checklist you can just tick mark your geometric features and you get an index and lower score in, in indicates the higher likelihood of success so if your index is increasing that's the risk profile so it's a very wonderful effort they have done and they have a data to back up so they have tested this type of approach with the uh, student community uh, they can do that sort of population test and uh, it has shown excellent results so 80% of the failures had dropped so that's uh, amazing so how uh, objectify has a, a product development recipe that is something i will share so instead of uh, going into details of all sort of processes all type of problem statements uh, if i just show one or two case studies that's better i i felt that's the reason why i brought today a recipe the way our approach works specifically for the metal operation that's the one that i am leading and uh, let's take a look at it so in case of a recipe you need a design a robust design and as well as the specifications for what is the uh, end result looks like so beginning with the end in mind is very important so what is the geometry and what is the uh, strength you need and which chemical composition it needs to be so in this case a stainless steel has to be used and uh, the design had been with the intention of investment casting and it's a centrifugal pump type of component and uh, the raw infield is available uh, in terms of a stainless steel powder cad is available and 2d detailing for dimensional specification is available then we can choose which machine to use uh, then we can plan for the process uh, we can plan for the post processing as well we can select the stress relieving cycle that is essential as a, as i told you in case of metal uh, there are residual stresses inherently because of the process so it's almost like welding welding deforms the objects that you are joining right so over here we have to do certain annealing type of heat treatment uh, that is essential step and uh, that gives the isotropic properties so once the part is printed is it is with the anisotropic properties so once we do stress relieving it becomes isotropic then we can do post processing for getting dimensional tolerances specified in 2d via milling and do cmm inspection and this is the overall way we follow but uh, over here you can see i told you the capability and how we can transform certain raw material to a finished good but unless it fits into the commercial aspect uh, we are not winning right so uh, that's the reason why we do due diligence beforehand we do the planning in terms of what is the need of raw material how much supply of raw material or inventory we need to keep uh, then we calculate the lead time for the processing so overall the process change uh, including post processing milling and its uh, quality checks like inspection and all and then we plan for the project as well as send out the proposal so that helps us to align with the customer that this is what you can expect in terms of quality this is the time and this is the cost that going to be incurred and then we can uh, push those production plans into our workshop and get it done uh, printing is just 20 25% of the effort you can see over here most of the effort is design planning production planning process planning and quality assurance so ultimately when we deliver quality results within budget and on time that's where the satisfaction comes and that's where the kano model i show it shared with you at the beginning so we are always uh, customer focused uh, in png i learned that customer or consumer is boss and we have to satisfy their need that's where the business case uh, we can tackle successfully so this is the process chain for your brief understanding so the design has to be certain oriented uh, then plan and assign a specific machine do the post processing and ultimately inspection okay so now i am going into much more detail as i mentioned i will introduce the basic tips and tools and techniques uh, in first half and then quickly ramp up for exposing the better techniques uh, advanced knowledge and advanced tools that are available in uh, digital environment so that's where i am heading to so 
uh, in case of uh, optimal orientation assessment safe orientation for successful printing and faster printing then uh, low amount of support structure is the second objective and easier removal of them and apart from that in case of dmls you need to achieve uh, without thermal deformation so prediction of those residual stresses and no deformation and uh, predicting them, them as well as if possible compensating them so that is something unique that we do because of our uh, computational power as well as the software packages that we develop with our experiences so we have a, a, a very robust way that we can predict whether there will be issues during printing and how we can compensate for that so that's the uh, simifact based uh, software based modeling and simulations that we conduct and uh, gain the confidence and then proceed for printing so over here visually i am describing the same so uh, conventional approach as i mentioned so you have a geometry you place it uh, you do the support strategy apply parameters then the process begins printing happens and you process it for post processing and you do the general validation with cmm but uh, advanced approach is with the simulation power of simulation so you apply a load configuration model and those thermal loads you can with the constraints validate and uh, apply the post processing thermal heat treatment validation as well and ultimately predict what is the geometric thermal deviations that might occur and accordingly you can compensate if you want or if that is acceptable within the zone of tolerances then you can proceed so i am sharing one of the example so imagine this bracket had to be milled from a solid block it would take so many setups even with the five axis milling and it will be a time consuming and costly affair in case of a, a cnc milling because uh, certain super alloys if you are using like titanium or certain higher uh, hardness grades of uh, tool steel stainless steel or inconel type of material uh, the the tips that cut those parts are expensive and they get worn away faster as well so overall process is expensive it's also time consuming it's very complex and difficult to achieve so over here using dmls technology or 3d printing is the best example for this type of uh, complex geometry which total volume total time for printing and deformations that are occurring in the geometry so although orientation 3 printing time is less but we chose the orientation 1 because of the uh, area of deformation was uh, less in orientation 1 and the quality was better so something of this sort can be achieved and with this type of approaches we have printed quite a lot of complex parts be it in titanium aluminum stainless steel inconel uh, and plenty other variety so another case study uh, in case of uh, compressor blades we were posed with a challenge that we need a very lightweight and thin geometry so 0.5 mm is the tip thickness of these type of blades then uh, all the time when we were doing the predictive simulation the tolerances were not being met so then we had to iterate and we did the compensation as well so that's the unique competitive advantage that we built with our software capability and our design knowledge so kudos to our team i really appreciate the efforts and thanks for support by our management as well so we could achieve uh, with the compensated model we could print successfully as well as we verified using the uh, 3d light scanning what is the overlay comparison and whether the deviations are in acceptable zones and the customer was delighted obviously if they get better quality part lightweight part 
using titanium material yeah so same story in case of uh, inconel 718 these are the turbine side blades same story about the centrifugal pump that i showed earlier as a basic example now moving on to the conformal cooling and tooling and die making industry this is uh, something for past one decade i spent quite a lot of time so uh, you, you can see in png the products like shampoo uh, those uh, containers are to be made in millions of copies for reaching to the customers so the scale is problem and uh, uh, how we can produce uh, each component as well as uh, uh, filling and sealing automation has to be in 400 bottles per minute so that faster pace for millions of copies is very crucial so uh, then people take a look at it oh the process has to be stable accuracy needs to be better but at the same time the production speed has to be higher so which is the time killer you would take a look and focus on right so similarly in case of tooling industry they observe that 50 percent of time goes on for just cooling the plastic part inside the cavities and that considers uh, considered as a non-productive time because you are not injecting, you are not doing any setup or removal of quality parts. So it's just a idle time, right? That's just a dual time. How can we reduce it? So that's where this technology add a very competitive advantage. You can have a conformal cooling channels which reduces the uh, cooling time almost by half. 40% to 50% of the cooling time can be reduced and uh, lower uh, cycle time means higher profits. Time is money. <laughs> so over here, I will show a couple of designs and uh, how our engineers were able to influence the tool designs. So over here, you can see in case of core insert for a USB port case, uh, our engineers tackled that problem very well. And uh, only additive manufacturing technology can allow you to make something of this sort of a structure, hollow structure inside a geometry. <coughs> you uh, go conventionally you need to drill deep holes with just orthogonal features means either a straight hole or at a 90 degree another hole at max you can achieve with the cnc mills and something of that sort you cannot have a complex twisty twirly type of uh, features inside so our engineers can assist you on this front we have a uh, better tool steel grades like managing steel we are since industry is in familiar with the H13 type of tool steel, we had recently done our one phase of iterations and uh, developed certain parameters and ready to roll out that material on offer as well. So do, do send us inquiries, uh, let's experiment, let's implement what we have. And that's is in a competitive advantage for your operation. So if you are developing injection molded parts and you are uh, looking at uh, better return on investments, so this is the smarter way than just looking at the part ca cost of the uh, mold. If you spend slightly more for the parts to be made using additive manufacturing, but you can gain quite a lot of uh, uh, productive time on the process side. So that's, sir, the, way, uh, that's the way you can justify. Sir, okay? uh, the time is currently running short. We need to uh, ramp up. Yeah, yeah. So now run a second poll. So second poll is about opinions from the audience. So we wanted to understand uh, whether do you see any practical applications immediately in your operations or you have something under your uh, kitchen being cooking as a design and that, that you want to be produced. We can assist you. Uh, we can You can seek consultancy from us as well. Uh, what is the right way of designing how we can influence design. So that's the poll about. So any sort of immediate needs or something in near future, we can definitely pitch in and help you. So the poll is now live. Uh, I would request everyone to uh, give their op opinions, submit their results. Okay, so I, I'm almost wrapping up now. I will share some of the case study that Sankha has promised. So how we can go up the value chain and influence the design for additive manufacturing. That's what I'm going to share after you take a poll. So take a moment and uh, do note down your answers. So 
uh, what I'm going to expose is uh, uh, the buzzwords recently in the market, the topology optimization, how can we change the shapes for uh, least amount of material consumption, lightweight structure, but saving the purpose, serving the needs. So that's what you are going to see. Uh, yes, so the poll is running. I would request everyone to please uh, submit their answers ASAP so that we can continue. Okay. Thanks, Sankhra. So I will move on because our time is short. So uh, next is about the optimal design. So uh, in case of design, you need uh, essential feature requirements and the constraint to be met. Those can be butting surfaces, aesthetic features, uh, fitment features. The least amount of uh, material consumption is the target, that's the objective. Uh, and better factor of safety without affecting the performance, right? That's what you want. So optimal, optimal results means exactly that. So you want lightweight, but good strength and uh, uh, serving the basic need that is expected or even going beyond that, uh, delighting. So that's, that's where uh, these type of FEA based uh, simulation softwares are uh, coming out in the market and we are experimenting and we have championed some of the uh, results with the few customers and we will be uh, ramping up the capability and do note your Sir, interest. we have received the poll results. Uh, you can uh, do check out and then give your opinions. Yeah, uh, let me see one more time. Where is the poll result? Yeah, okay. Okay, so 63% people noted not immediate need, but they can withdraw parallels from the examples that I shared. shared. Uh, 30%, that's a good sign. So they are, they are working on design. So I, I see a lot of good designers over here uh, listening to this uh, webinar and we welcome them to discuss their problems with us so that we can influence the design. And 5% are sharing that they have uh, immediate need and they need help in terms of choosing the right technologies. And 4%, they have decided they design as well as the application ready immediately they can jump on and they are just looking for uh, appropriate capabilities. So I think we are doing a, a better job by exposing what capabilities we are having and uh, we can definitely help you engaging our resources as needed. Thanks. Thanks for this poll. So let's move on to uh, the core, core case study and then we will Rahul. open up uh, for question and answers. So. Rahul, can you hear me? Rahul, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, I just want to tell uh, you that there have been almost 120 odd questions. Wow. <laughs> okay, and so I will we, have, we have already answered 105. So, good, good. so, so, so there is some good questions. Uh, the uh, everybody is asking. Sure, I sure. So to... I will, I will. Thank everyone. Question. Thank everyone. Yeah, uh, definitely. Thanks, thanks for uh, the call. Uh, agenda of this PPT I could cover in a stipulated time. So uh, now is a, a, a case studies type of and question and answer engaging conversation type of a, a phase of this PPT. So please stay and uh, get some of your more answers, uh, get your thirst for knowledge satisfied. So this is one example where titanium part had to be uh, fabricated with a toroidal shape without internal supports. So conventionally they were fabricating two parts and welding it. It was weaker, but with the 3D printing, we could uh, design self-supporting type of geometry, simulate it for the strength and produced already. So another example is uh, optimized shapes for manifold. So in case of uh, applications in uh, hydraulics and pneumatics, uh, they always begin with the solid block and just drill or mill the channels, but that's uh, dumb. Now you have a better tool available. You can reduce uh, excess weight, which is just a, a dead weight and uh, 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 which is ideal for 3D. Uh, 
better strength, better performance. So this is one of the approaches that is coming up where you can have a multiple candidates prepared by removing the dead weight and then check the performance of those uh, 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 all components, select the best one, check its uh, adaptability for the 3D printing and that becomes a design validation and that you can print. So uh, one of such case study I will quickly go through. So this was a bike component and degrees of freedom as well as the uh, basic uh, principles of FEA like three body diagram was shared with us and uh, in terms of material what is the strength and what is the one mice straight stress allowable when the loading happens is shared with us. So with this problem statement, we could quickly uh, apply that approach of a topology optimization. And uh, one of the result I can share over here. So ultimately, when you look it into perspective, the original weight was 2,860 gram and it reduced up to 70%. So uh, that's the power of this technology. You can see the weight reduction if it is a bold by keeping this strength. And one more constraint they had mentioned to us that some of the surfaces are aesthetic. So we cannot have a ugliness over there. So we could maintain that as well, but still reduce significant weight. And that is something powerful, right? So topology optimization as a key fundamental works in this fashion. So in a digital world, you can simulate, you can have multiple failures digitally. That's the beauty of uh, this technique. So you can select one, produce that part. If it is performing well, the physical qualification had been successful, then it becomes your digital twin. That's a digital inventory that you have that you can anytime revoke that digital data and make copies as per your needs. So uh, ultimately concurrent engineering is the uh, need of the hour. So there are islands like design, planning and scheduling, production strategy and risk management. So I would say these are like four limbs. And if you are pushed in the water and you are just uh, moving your hands a while, not in sync, not in synchronized manner, then you are going to sink. So uh, most of the time people focus on planning and scheduling and production, but uh, that's like back paddling with your feet. That is going to keep you just afloat. But if you employ your two limbs, your empty hands and the power of brain of people and a teamwork and collaborative and concurrent manner, then uh, you can propel yourself forward. So that's the beauty of uh, concurrent engineering. And you can just look at us as a extended team of your organization. Uh, invite us for discussions uh, for better product design and helping you since we are advertising ourselves as an engineering service provider company, not just the 3D print fabricator. 3D printing fabricator is not our goal. So we want to partner, spend more quality time with you, uh, influence your design choices. So that's the end of my presentation I, and I'm open for any question and answer. So that's the way we funnel everything, streamline and get the profit. So let's get to the core. And my ask is to share your needs ask doubts, let's see how I can help and put your ideas into action. So that's the goal of Innovators at Home. Thank you so much. Ankit? Yes. Over to you so you can uh, share the Q&A questions. So, so I'll tell you like I have, I'm overwhelmed right now. Yeah. I, I, we have got almost 133 questions. Okay. And uh, I have been able to answer 122 in this uh, uh, time being. So it has been an amazing, amazing session. And I've got really good questions. So there have been questions on the process. There have been questions on the post-processing. There have been questions on uh, talking about... Uh, uh, who is this Sathi guy? Uh, now they will be see. Uh, so Sati, I'll, I'll reply to your questions, uh, in some time. Uh, so we are working on these questions. Uh, so you can understand, uh, it has been like 40 minutes since Rahul has been presenting. I've been telling you, like, uh, I have already answered 130, uh, 122 questions. And right now, 138th question has already popped into my screen. 
so it has been a overwhelming response so a different level of questions talking on the material process uh, software pre processing of the data post machining of the component uh, talking about the surface finishing uh, talking about the grades of the material talking about the heat treatment so it has been a really good response so if you can post more questions um, i can write to you separately because uh, the time has already run out so we are again at 6 o'clock so whatever questions you have uh, you can write to me uh, write to on this so open uh, this thing this will be open for next 15 minutes so whatever questions you have you can write it and i'll reply to all of them uh, in the meantime awesome thanks for your engagement and uh, active participation with your queries and uh, really look forward to again uh, expose the next agenda uh, for our uh, webinar series is the third webinar where we are going to discuss the additive manufacturing and its real life applied applications both overseas india uh, so many people were asking can you share with us the uh, stories of indian application so we cannot share the customer names uh because this is in public domain and we are bound by non disclosure ag agreements so we cannot share the customer names we cannot share uh the context in which it was used uh where exactly our parts that we produce are going to be uh utilize what is the technical configuration what is the cad model don't ask those things we will not be sharing those type of case studies with you what we can share in good spirit is only the methodology the principles the approach that we followed that will benefit you to draw parallels and uh, uh, implement in your organizations so that's the goal of our uh, all these presentations so that you can be productive innovative at home and uh, uh, consider us as a partners as as well as uh, uh, challengers so that's that's the uh, key uh, uh, motivating driver for organizations like us so we like to be challenged and uh, we solve problems so do do ask questions do share your uh, hardships okay so uh, my my personal email id is shared with you here uh, as well as our uh, uh, usual connect with marketing or sales uh, rahul you can talk about the next session uh, in the meantime i'll be replying to everyone sure sure so our next session is going to cover uh, let me open up the link for that okay so i'm sharing my screen right now so you can see uh, the first webinar was about uh, additive manufacturing the field building 101 today we covered the tools rules uh, of additive manufacturing the design rules build strategy implementation everything so on day after tomorrow 10th we are going to cover uh, utilization of these type of technologies in different sectors so we have a good number of indian customers some overseas clients and we can expose some of the uh, inspirational stories that had happened overseas with the major players those were the first early adopters they had gone through the resistance so now we we are in a phase that we are the early majority you can say so early majority enjoys the benefits of the uh, loss leaders and uh, i think lot of uh, majority in india uh, is not early majority of adopters they are just majority seeking solutions and looking for partnership and implementing these type of competitive advantage in their uh, operations so we are here so we are the early uh, majority you can say we are early adopter uh, of course we were early adopter in, in the phase of 2015 16 now we are in early majority so the majority can connect with us uh, we are here to help you so we will share applications in automotive aerospace uh, aviation sector 
white goods, medical and uh, space technology, oil and gas, there are plenty. And I think that will be the most uh, uh, engaging webinar where you will see a lot of applications and uh, a lot of questions as well. So the way we have organized the first two sessions where we try to answer the questions in between, but the flow of presentation was maintained. In case of applications on the fly, we will first show you the applications in each segment and ask, you can ask the questions. It will be much more engaging henceforth. So the session three, four and five is more of a panelist type of discussions. So me, Ankit and our colleagues in marketing and sales, they are going to show the applications and we are going to discuss the applications and how the competitive advantage had been exploited by certain companies and they gain the market share. They are saving significant amount of cost. Their profit margins are getting better. Along with that, we are going to discuss in the next sessions, the misconceptions uh, and uh, demystify certain uh, and then there are challenges too. So since this is a technology that is getting matured, so that will follow. So please uh, be with us and uh, yeah, so we can keep on answering your Q and A. So let me help answer some of them as well. I'm looking at, okay. So how trustworthy is the simulation software for build simulation and failure analysis? That, that's, that is one of the question I see. So I would say, as I explained, so if you gain any 80, 20 principle type of 80% confidence, that is better than going blindly. That's the answer I can imagine immediately. So you get in certain insight where the problem might likely arise and how to mitigate that, how wonderful it is. Means if you are going blindly and you are failing, then the failure chance of probability is 100%. Uh, but in case of uh, using simulation software, if you are reducing the failure, probability by 20% and it, uh, probability is nobody can predict, right? So these are uh, based on physics and uh, conditional uh, behaviors based on machine maintenance, its accuracy, based on uh, your predictive model, how robust it was, based on simulation power, how much uh, discretization that you could achieve uh, in order to do the justice to uh, model of the simulation. So all these aspects come into picture. Okay. Some people are asking, can topology optimization be done on Abacus software? Well, uh, there are multiple players coming into a market with their own packages. So the basic solver remains the same. Just the uh, pre-processing and the post-processing, how it is managed well, uh, that's the competitive advantages software developer are building. So I can see a couple of names like uh, MSC being one of the organization, then Autodesk with the NetFab packages. They are uh, playing in this area as well, quite heavily. There are a few German companies who are as well uh, very well placed and some startups too. So can it be solved using Abacus? Yes, means you need to define the problem right, put the conditions, get the uh, family of children as a uh, solutions, choose one of the best child, uh, hone it for uh, winning and uh, simulate again, cross verify, and then run it for assessment on 3D printing, whether it will be possible to 3D print that specific shape. If it works out in Abacus, yeah, you can do it. For stress analysis and thermal analysis with software, again, people are asking the uh, specific uh, branded product. As I mentioned, go to the problem core. Uh, you can use the tools effectively when you define the problem. Uh, as I mentioned, there are so many uh, solution providers with the process itself, the 3D printers, the machine makers, there are so many people coming into market. Uh, recently, India uh, is placing the uh, 
itself as a machine maker as well. So not just uh, machine makers are from overseas. So some are Indian made machines as well. And Chinese are being competitive on this front. So the China made machines as well. So it depends on how much that specific branded organization had been uh, matured enough to tackle the technical problems robustly, effectively, cost effectively, and uh, network after sale service is very key. So somebody can develop a package and uh, pass it on to you, but uh, how to use it? You have certain questions, then nobody is available. That's not a good thing. So yeah. Uh, so can we end this webinar now? I guess. Yes. Yes. Uh, we we yeah. said uh, so until then Ankit will be ask, answering the questions. So, fifteen minutes time we gave for people to post the questions and uh, answers are being uh, sent out. So six fifteen we can close. So uh, kudos to the support from uh, uh, our marketing team and uh, thanks for uh, uh, attending this. media partners. Yes. So our media partners like Open. Uh, uh, daily CAD CAM and uh, uh, sponsorship, course co sponsorship by Tagma. So, uh, all the people who are making these sessions very engaged, uh, very engaged as well as a uh, good amount of quality audience, that's, that's uh, really appreciated. And uh, efforts by our staff. Uh, Nishan, thank you so much again. Yeah. And Sankha, Ashish. Yeah, th thank you, sir. Uh, so basically, uh, to everyone, uh, we will be sending out uh, a bundle which will contain all the question, question answers that has been asked. So after this is over, after all the sessions are over, you'll receive a bundle. And if you have missed any session uh, in the past, like the last session, don't worry. Uh, we will, like in the bundle, we'll, we'll include everything, the, including the presentations as well. So you don't have to worry about that. Well, I think most answers are done. So Sankha... Uh, as you wish, you can uh, turn off the seminar. So 158 yes. answers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we'll be ending the webinar. Uh, don't worry. You can keep your questions and uh, questions coming in uh, in our mail IDs. And uh, thank you for attending again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Yes.